Hi, my name is Bob and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to describe in detail the steps you need to take to convert your existing bike into an e-bike. We're going to cover five things. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to remove your existing crank set. The second thing we're going to cover is how do you convert your non-standard BSA bottom bracket to a BSA bottom bracket. Now you can skip that step if you already have a standard BSA bracket. The third step, the most fun, is installing the motor. In this case, we're going to install a Tongsheng uh, mid-drive motor. The fourth step is how to connect that motor to the battery, the display control, as well as the speed sensor. And the fifth step is a final build safety check. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you an opportunity to like and subscribe, and I'm going to share with you the written instructions that give you some lessons learned, detailed information about where I purchased the motor, and some of the parts and, and tools that I used uh, in the build. So let's get to it. So the package has finally arrived. We have the motors uh, from EcoCycles, and I started to take this apart. And I thought I would show you quickly uh, what it looks like when we get the package. So we've got two boxes like this uh, that came from EcoCycles. This one is the uh, upgrade that does not have a coaster brake. And then the one I have on the table here is the one with the coaster brake. Uh, we'll dig into the other one. Now, here's the motor. So this is the coaster brake one chain guard which we'll be taking off um, it's actually smaller than I thought it would be uh, very low profile you can hardly see it behind the chain guard so that's the motor it also comes with all the cables as you would imagine uh, and a tool so here's a tool I'm assuming they're going to show us what to do with that but I imagine this is for tightening the crank set some miscellaneous cables. Um, this thing here is the uh, control. These cables are actually kind of nice. I'm sure, I'm assuming this longer one is for the battery. And I was able actually to tell them what the distance was between my motor and the battery. So this is a custom made cable uh, that EcoCycles made. And uh, here's another cable. I'm not sure where this one goes, but. Uh, it's got a nice, uh, these cables are pretty clean and they've got a nice uh, fabric-y uh, wrap on them. So it should put the installation uh, so that it looks pretty clean. Um, also in the package were the two cranks. So I believe these are 70 millimeter. Um, and there's some zip ties in here as well. So let's take our stuff, go outside and take the old crank set off the bike and get ready to do this new install. Hi there. So I don't have a bike stand, but what I did is I improvised. I went ahead and I hung the bike from these uh, straps. From a uh, rack in the garage, which was pretty convenient. The first thing we're going to have to do is take off this chain guard. It'll block us here from getting this out. This is a one-piece crank set, so we don't have the issue of having to pop off each one individually. And I'm also going to need to, to take the chain off. I'm going to need to disconnect this wheel. Um, i got to take off this coaster brake. So this is a three-speed internal coaster brake. We're going to take this piece off. Loosen the nuts and take this wheel off, and that'll give us access to the crank set. Um, much more easily. First, let's take off the chain guard. So all I need for that is a Phillips screwdriver. I think there's just two screws, this one and this one. Let's get those undone. Okay, two screws, and I'll just put these in a baggie so I don't lose them for later. But uh, chain guards are. 
next step here is to five millimeter uh, hex. Loosen this bolt here. And take this off. Oh, and this pin. So we gotta make sure we have keep this pin. It goes inside the axle there. So I'll set, it's got a lot of grease on there. I'll set this aside as well in our plastic bag. So I have a small 15 millimeter wrench. There, get that one off. And this other one. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get it off without taking it all the way off. Hmm. Coaster brake. Okay, so now we gotta take off the coaster brake because that wheel wouldn't come off. So, that's a 10 millimeter on the back there. And just a Phillips. So now that we have the coaster brake off, we should be able to take the wheel off pretty easily. And there you go. Rear wheel off. So now that we have the chain loosened, we've got to get the pedal off at least on this side. I think I might leave the pedal on on the other side. <laughs> I'll come down here so you can see me. And this is gonna take a 15 millimeter wrench. That's pretty common. And uh, it, sometimes it's hard to break these loose, so I have my other tool here, the hammer. So let me see if I can do it by hand first. Let's see. All right, so a little bit hard. So what I'll do is I'll just hold the pedal like this. And this might be easier if you're on the ground. You can just move the pedal forward, put the wrench out here and smack it. But I'll see if I can hold it and give it a tap and see if it'll break loose. Oh, there you go. So we'll get that wheel off. And you may have noticed that this, on the non-chain side, this is gonna screw off uh, clockwise, which is turning it to the right. Uh, that's reverse on this side, so the other side will be normal. Set this pedal aside. And like I said, I think I'm gonna leave the other pedal on uh, and see if I can get it off. Next, we've got to get uh, these things off. So just like the wheel, this is gonna come off uh, clockwise to get this off. So let's see if we can get this. I'm just gonna use an adjustable crescent and see if we can get that to come off. Oh, that was pretty loose. And once you break it, you should be able to screw it off by hand. So we'll get that off of there. The next thing in here is a little washer. And that washer comes right off. And I'll show it to you. See, it's got a little tooth in there. Um, it helps to keep it locked in position. So I don't think we're gonna be using those. And now the next thing here is the cone. And sometimes you can just use a, I don't have a cone tool, but you can just use a screwdriver or your fingernail. Oh, right, okay, there you go. And that'll come off as well. So that was, 
probably not very tight there. So behind the cone, we're gonna find the bearings. Let me just get this off. Now we've got that off. I'll pull out the bearing. So these bearings are in a closed cage. Okay, they look pretty clean. Not too bad. Uh, I'll set these aside in our baggie and we'll come back to put pull out the other side if I can. So to pull this off, I decided to come on the other side of, the, of this. I'll take the chain off all the way. And there's another bearing on this side. Let's see if I can get that out. Lucky there. Came right out. Lucky day. Now on this particular style of bottom bracket, you can see that we have two press fit cups that need to be removed. Now these hold the bearings for the crank set. To remove the cups, you have two options. One is to go to a bike shop and the other is to do it yourself. Now I'm going to use a one and a half inch pipe and a hammer to get these cups out. Besides, any project that requires a hammer has got to be fun. Now to do this, I'm just going to put the pipe into the bottom bracket, find the edge of the cup on the other side, and give it a tap with the hammer and knock it out. Now it's best to tap the bottom, the top, and each side with small taps until the cup comes out rather than one big hard swing. Now be patient, <clears throat> just keep tapping along, and there you go, cup's out. Now here's what the cup looks like. Uh, from one side. Now we'll do the other. Now this is a good view. You get to see the pipe against the edge of the cup and going around the top and bottom and the sides. It's also a pretty good view of my shoes. Oop, there you go. Pop right out. Now I use the calipers to measure the width of the bottom bracket and it's 68 millimeters wide. Now that the bearing cups are out, we can use the calipers to measure the inside diameter of the bottom bracket. We need to get a really good reading so that we know what type of eccentric adapter we need to order. Now after taking multiple measurements with our clean bottom bracket, we can see that it's 50.8 millimeters, which translates to roughly 2 inches now in this part of the project, I had to take a pause while I did research on the eccentric adapter, ordered it, and then waited for it to be delivered. Now I provide uh, more information in part one of this three-part series where I share information about how to select the right eccentric adapter. I also provide additional information. Now it's finally arrived in the mail, the bottom bracket adapter from Luna Cycles. Again, this is the eccentric adapter, and it's a pretty nice piece of machine aluminum, and it fits right over the crankset uh, shaft on the Tishong motor. So I think this is gonna work just fine. Now, equally important is that the offset on the eccentric adapter allows enough of a gap uh, for the outside of the shell to fit between uh, the bike bottom bracket and the motor housing. If you recall, we measured the inside diameter of our bottom bracket at just about two inches, and this matches up pretty well. Um, in addition, on the EcoBike website, where I purchased the motor, they gave a um, maximum or desired uh, dimension for the BSA bracket housing to be less than 35 millimeters. And we are, uh, has a little play in there so for you. So we want this uh, opening on our adapter to be 35 millimeters or less 
and it is. Uh, you can see there it's 33.4, so this is perfect. Let's go ahead and put these in. Now I'm going to place the motor into the bottom bracket housing so that we can get kind of a visual for where our maximum offset should be positioned within the bottom bracket. Now the torque from the motor is going to cause the housing to press forward and we're going to want our max offset on the eccentric adapter to kind of align with that pressed forward position. So I think that's about where we want it to be. Now I've placed the eccentric adapter into the bottom bracket housing so that the narrowest part of that adapter is in that pressed forward position. And I'm going to use a board to disperse the impact from the hammer you know, flat against that adapter as flat as possible so that I don't damage it. And we'll just give it uh, multiple taps, trying to keep that board as flush as possible to uh, the bottom bracket so that we're pressing it in evenly. And just kind of check it as you go along and uh, keep giving it taps until that edge of the adapter is flush with the bottom bracket. Um, just checking there to see if it's denting, but it looks pretty good. Now we'll do the other side. Now we've already installed the eccentric adapter on the other side and I've put the motor into the housing, into the bottom bracket so that we can help align uh, the eccentric adapter on the opposite side. So I'm just going to lift the motor up and uh, get that positioned so that it fits just right. Uh, We'll take it adjust you know, just kind of adjust it around until it feels like it's in the correct position eliminate the play and I think that's it right there now we're going to carefully take the motor out being careful not to move that adapter and then we're just going to take our board <laughs> and hammer like we did last time and just tap it again uh, flush with the bottom bracket. That as I can. <laughs> now the moment of truth with both adapters pushed into the bottom bracket We'll slip the motor in and see if it'll go all the way, and it does. And I think that's going to work out just fine. Now the Tong Shane kit comes with a couple of spacers like this, and I've kind of placed them there. I'm not even sure I'm saying Tong Shane right, but uh, it comes with the spacers, bolts, and this metal plate that holds the motor into the bottom bracket housing. Now I'm just going <clears> to <throat> loosely place these in there, uh, kind of make sure that they're in and threaded correctly. Now there's a ring that goes on this threads uh, to hold that mounting bracket in place and this screws down and again as long as that metal plate has the correct number of spacers you're going to be able to tighten this down and it's going to hold the motor in there so that it doesn't move. Now the kit comes with this wrench and we're going to be able to use this wrench to tighten down that lock ring and press that metal bracket and pull that motor into the bottom bracket housing. So just tighten this up as well as the bolts and keep everything even and that motor will lock in place. So 
This yellow one goes to the speed sensor, so we'll kind of zip tie that loosely here while we get it figured out. This one actually goes forward, and we're going to take it this way to the controller, and then this one goes to the battery. <clears throat> we'll run this just for now, kind of up like this. Okay, so now we're ready to put the pedals on, and you can maybe see if I bring it close. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Uh, that actually says it's the right pedal. So we'll put this on the right side. pedals from the original old school crank set wouldn't work and I had to use some pedals I had lying around from a mountain bike. Uh, it's a newer type of pedal and I had to edit out the uh, at this point some colorful language so I spared you from having to hear that. So I'm going to get the other pedals. So this this left pedal is going to screw on backwards. So we, instead of lefty loosey, it's on the left hand side, it's going to go reverse thread. And this one, we're going to go regular thread. Okay, so there's that one. Again, we're going to go opposite to tighten this one. We're trying to go back. Okay, so those are tight. Now, final step is to connect the control. So, we're going to put the control on the handlebar and run it along the handlebar down the front of the bike and connect it to that black wire that's pointing straight down. That yellow wire, we're going to connect it to the sensor that's going to go on the chainstay and uh, the battery cable up to the battery. Okay, so now um, I took off the handle grip and uh, use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and kind of lifted up the handle grip so that it would slide off. And uh, we put the, uh, the control on, uh, unit on. So we've taken that out of the package and just slipped it on uh, here to the handlebar and mounted it there. There's a couple of little black washers that come in to help you keep a slip separation between this thing which turns and the handle grip. So there's a control unit and let's see if we can show you the wire. I just ran the wire um, here along the handlebar. I'm just, I'll have to clean this up later. I did a quick zip tie there. I, again, that's temporary. And I've run the wire down to follow along the frame and it connects 
to that connector that we talked about earlier that was right there on the bottom of the motor. Uh, I'll pull it away from, I just pulled this from underneath and then uh, made the connection there. Uh, threw a zip tie here just for good measure. Now, the other two connections that we saw earlier, we have two wires that are coming here that I ran one along the side of the chainstay here, and I've just taken a couple of zip ties. I didn't use the ones that were enclosed. I wanted to make sure everything was okay, so I'm gonna use these generic white ones. In the kit, they give you some black ones. So if this works out, I'll replace it with the black ones. Uh, but one important thing to note that when you're looking at this uh, sensor, you might think that this ball piece here on the end is where you should line your magnet up. It's not. You want to line the magnet up. You want to line the magnet up with this piece right here. And I'll show you the magnet. So there's the magnet. So now here's a shot of the magnet lined up with the sensor, and that's where you really want it to be. Um, the spacing there per the instructions, shoot for a half an inch and then you can move it closer or farther depending on uh, whether or not your display is capturing the output right. Now, for the final wire, remember in the previous video, I showed that uh, we were gonna run that wire up along here and up into the seat post and then onto our rack. And I'll back up so you can see the rack. But here's a, a picture of the rack and I just put that on there. That's just store-bought rack. That happens to be an electro rack. Uh, and if I back up, you can see how we connected it there to the, uh, to the back wheel. Now, I'll zoom in a little closer. Now in a separate video, I show how I constructed the panel here. You can see that there's a piece of wood. I just painted it black. And these two screws, they actually are going through the bottom uh, into the wood. So it's pretty secure there. The battery has a lock and we'll use the lock. And again, the, the video for how to make this guess do-it-yourself rack is uh, going to be part of um, the initial video, video step one or series one. Okay, so I mean that's that's the bike. Let's go ahead and uh, get the battery connected, and we'll give it a test. Now here's our battery. Um, and uh, it's got a key on it. And it just sits right on here. And just put it on there. And you just press it forward and it locks on. So now we have uh, the battery. And let's give it a test on the control unit. Okay, so here we have the control unit, and this is the power button up here on top, and uh, I guess they call it info button. Uh, we'll give it a press. It's working. Oh, and it's reading the battery full. Um, and you can see here the way they, that you work this is uh, it's defaulting, I guess, to uh, power assist level one and if you turn the gauge turn this throttle thing it's not a throttle actually it's just a selector you turn the selector and it'll go to off and if you click it up one two three four so four levels of assist okay now to switch it um, we have the display set in kilometers per hour and I think I'd prefer to have it in miles so we'll hold the info button and then press the power button 
and it switches to this configuration display and I won't get into it in this video but in the first video uh, the next video I create I'm going to explain what all these settings are and how to change them but just for grins we'll go ahead and uh, use these switches to move up and down in the menu and I'm just pressing the info button to move down to kilometers and then they use this selector and now you can see that it switched to miles and if you press the power button it takes us back and you can see that it changed so prior to taking on a test run take a little time to reinspect uh, the bolts on the wheel so the front wheel test the back wheel as well validate that the coaster brake connection is tight recheck the pedals to make sure that the crank arms are tight and that the pedals are tight um, it's just a safety check to make sure that you didn't miss anything uh, once you've validated that, uh, you're ready for your first test run. Now that concludes the uh, e-bike part 2A installation video of the mid-drive, the Tongsheng mid-drive motor you know, on a non-standard bottom bracket. Uh, e-bike part 2B will be a shorter and more simpler uh, version of this uh, because we're going to be installing on a standard uh, BSA bottom bracket. Uh, here's some pictures of uh, the final product and please like and subscribe uh, and we'll I'll notify you when uh, the next e-bike part 2b goes uh, gets posted and I'll also share with you some written instructions and sources uh, for the video. Thanks for watching.